we're going to visit Columbia Villa, uh, Columbia Village here in Portland. It was originally uh, built in the in 1942 to house the workers from the Naval Yard during the war. After the war, it became low-income housing. Saw a lot of years of wear, um, and uh, in the 1980s was the site of the first drive-by drive shooting in Portland. Well, in 2003, we. Uh, rebuilt it, and we have a new new community to show you. Katie Wood will take us to a tour of this remarkable village. Hi, my name is Katie Wood, and I'm with Sustainable Today. And today we are at a housing development called New Columbia. And today we're talking with Marcy McAnally from HerbsWorks. How are you doing today, Marcy? I'm doing great. Thanks, Great. Kate. And you guys had a huge hand in this urban development, correct? Correct. And what was your mission or goal when you took on this project? It was to desegregate the affordable housing that was on the Columbia Villa site and reintegrate this neighborhood with the adjacent neighborhoods, um, the streets, the parks, the way housing faces the streets and the way alleys are designed, the way whole communities like this work and are integrated with their um, other neighborhoods that surround them is a really big part of our mission. Here, for instance, um, we've tried to do things like make the streets as um, focused on the houses and the porches and the fronts of the houses as possible, really tried to get the parking and the garages off of them and into the lanes behind or alleys behind the houses. When it comes to housing developments, how do developers come up with how they're going to place their houses and roads? Is there a national standard? And I think that the national standard is uh, kind of isolated pods of d neighborhoods that subdivisions that have an internal street system, maybe connected at an arterial in one place. So. People have to go back out of this neighborhood and, and to, on the arterial to get to their jobs or schools. So they're generally single use, residential only, and then on top of that, they're usually single income type of houses. I think people are beginning to understand that a lot of the developments that were created in the 50s, 60s, and 70s that isolated and segregated low income populations and affordable housing are very unhealthy. So um, a new approach was. Um, begun to be considered by the Housing Authority of Portland. Come forward many years and in about 2002 the Housing Authority of Portland applied for Hope 6 grant money. And um, there were about 430 units here before. It was a relatively low density uh, to residential development. It was all one type of housing. Um, and now we have 850 units. Um, so we've increased the density, and at the same time, the Housing Authority of Portland dedicated itself to doing something really innovative, which was mixing in market rate housing right into the most affordable housing, some of it, in the region, which the Housing Authority provides. We wanted it to be really, truly integrated, so, and for there to be no difference in the design between the rental housing and the for sale market housing. And they sold those lots off to home builders who then sold them to buyers. So we have a mix of income groups living here, which I, is the new standard that I was talking about before. You've also been able to make this area sustainable. What is it here you have outside the school to? Well, this is a, a device that filters the storm water before it um, reaches the, the waterways. And we have many of these on site. This is one of the largest ones right in front of the school. So it is also great for education and the, and the teachers can use it to talk about the importance of stormwater treatment on site. 98% of the stormwater that falls on this site of New Columbia is treated on site now. And we were also able to um, build about 80% less um, stormwater system than would normally be built for a community like this. So it was um, the benefit to the housing authority and infrastructure cost savings is enormous. And in the alley here, we have this nice little graded area. Um, what is this for? Well, this this is, I like this design a lot and the way it looks, Very but it was in part of our way of compensating for the fact that in order to meet the city's standards at that time for alleys, we had to build them a little wider than we would have liked, so we have more asphalt in the alleys than we wanted. And to compensate, we um, were able to get an appeal to build this strip of permeable paving in the middle so the water can soak down. You can see that the alley is slightly 
um, slope toward the center. Water can soak down and be treated before it, it um, enters the storm uh, the groundwater system. So in the construction and development of New Columbia, you were able to preserve a lot of the trees, correct? Correct. And many of these trees were planted in 1942. There were about 430 trees on site when we began the planning. And the city's tree preservation ordinance requires 35% of those be preserved. Uh, but there are many ways of meeting the ordinance, and a lot of developers meet it by paying into a fund um, and not preserving the trees on site. But we were dedicated to preserving many of these trees, as many as we could. So we, re we designed the whole development around the trees as much as we could. The roads around the trees, the school is designed around the trees. And um, in the end, we were able to save almost 50% of the trees, many of them for 48 um, inches in diameter or more. And a lot of residents who moved from here, uh, who were relocated during the construction, moved back. And many of them, I've heard, say that they remember the trees. So everything else is different. The streets are different. The houses are different. Th things are in a different location, but they have some orientation to that site that they knew before because the trees are there. And when you did the deconstruction of the old Columbia Villa, what happened to all those materials? Yeah, an amazing amount of the material here was reused. 100% of the concrete the rubble was actually ground up and used for the roadbed surface. So that means that all of that was not trucked away from the site. It's actually still here. So it saved a lot of energy and fuel um, costs. And then there were a lot of buildings that were removed by different housing companies. One Vancouver. Uh, one building, a uh, service building, is now in Vancouver rebuilt. Um, I think it's about 82% of the material was recycled or reused on site, and uh, tons of material was diverted from the landfill, therefore. So New Columbia is also a multi-use mm -hmm. development. Um, how is that so? We saw the school and then we also have the stores. What else does it offer here? Well, we're walking down a main street. That's what we call this street here where we organized all of the retail services. And the school is an anchor at one end. This park is the an anchor at the other end. There's a senior housing development here. Um, but we wanted to gather up all the social service facilities and the retail and put them together in an area that would be kind of the center of the development. And then there's a location efficient design aspect to this too, which is trying to connect developments like this to uh, jobs in the region. And one way we've been able to do that is by um, building this around the transit. <laughs> This is a city park. It's not just a private development park here. It's not just for these um, residents. When we looked at the whole community plan when we did the neighborhood uh, study, mm -hmm. this was identified, this whole northeast corner of the town has been identified as a park deficient area. So we worked with the parks department to locate a public park here. It's been real good. We've been getting to know families uh, in the neighborhood, and that's um, that's what we hope. We're really knowing the people around us is important. It's been cool. There's a lot of kids, sort of kids to play with. Uh, just a lot of people in general, just around. It's different. Like it's more of a community as, as to where we used to live at. It wasn't so much of a community. Some of these common greens, like this one, um, are actually used for playground equipment and kids to play and. Uh, creating these gave us an excuse to create a sense of community around them of different types of characters. So there's some, as I mentioned, that are play areas and very active and noisy with all the houses looking out onto the play area. And then this one, which is more passive and contemplative with the, this beautiful sycamore tree at the center. So walking through the neighborhood, it's all very walkable. You have pathways going everywhere, really. This, the whole community is designed around that. People use the alleys, the paths through the park, the sidewalks, all for walking. 
the site uh, of some of the greatest density in the entire neighborhood is on the perimeter of the park here. And I want people to see that density can be beautiful. This is very well designed density, really integrated into the neighborhood. And that density really integrates with sustainability of this place. And that's just really amazing what you've done here with New Columbia, because you've really done it throughout the whole development. And that's really great, something you don't see in our communities today. So thank you very much, Marcy, for being with us. I really appreciate what you're doing here. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And I'm Katie Wood with Sustainable Today.